Hey, what's up guys? This is the Trumbo fam, and this is my son, Easton Trumbo, and my sweet <laughs> niece, Brooklyn Baby. <laughs> we have five more days till Easter. We're all excited here. We're getting ready, and right now, we are going to open up resurrection eggs. This is a really cool thing to do with the family. Um, you can get these on Amazon, actually. Um, I think they're like... $19.99. This is $19.99 on Amazon. It's opening up the wonders of the Easter story. It comes in this cute little egg carton case. Here they are. Ooh. Ooh. All the colors. Each egg, each colored egg represents something really significant to the Jesus story. We are going to open up each egg. Brooklyn and Easton are going to help me with that. And then we are going to see what's inside the egg and then let you know how it all ties in oh, the Jesus oh. story. It's not yo. <laughs> we're going to let you know how it all ties in the Jesus story. Let's get started. Brooklyn, do you want to go first? The first oh, egg, no, and it lit. comes with this really cool booklet, and it'll tell you everything you need I'm to know. I'm going first, all right. So, the first egg is blue, dark blue, Brooklyn. E. What's inside? Oh, e. A donkey. Oh. <laughs> it's a donkey. It's <laughs> a donkey. So, what does a donkey have to do with Jesus? Um, he rode... He was given the donkey, and then he rode into Jerusalem before his death. That is so good, Brooklyn. Okay, here's the verse. A donkey was given to Jesus to ride into Jerusalem just before his death and resurrection. What's a donkey? Yeah. Isn't it exciting well. that the donkey owner freely <laughs> gave the donkey when he found out it was for Jesus? Ooh. What many people don't know is that it was common tradition for a king to ride on a donkey in times of peace. And although Jesus is the King of Kings, God the Father wanted him to bring peace to people. The Bible often refers to Jesus as the Prince of Peace. Jesus gives us peace, that is, not like the peace the world gives. Jesus' peace comes as we repent or turn from our sins and believe in the Son of God. And then, as we continue to obey and trust in Him as the Lord of our life, we will experience His peace. Many people believed Jesus was the Son of God. Many were healed of sickness or blindness. So when Jesus rode down the street, people were eager to see him. Oh, how excited they were to see the Messiah, the Savior, the Chosen One of God. They wanted to be near him, talk to him, and speak to him. They were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Did you know that when things seemed to be going well for Jesus, it was easier for people to love and follow him. But when the Jewish leaders challenged Jesus by saying he was not the son of God, the people began to be afraid. Many thought if they admitted they were followers of Jesus and believed that he was God, they might be in danger too. The truth is that God calls us to follow Jesus no matter what. It may be hard at times and others may try to tempt us not to follow Jesus, we need to listen to God and trust what he says. So that donkey was something special because that was like the beginning of the whole story of Easter. He rode in on a donkey to Jerusalem. So let's put that back in the egg and we are going to move on to Easton. The next egg is light pink. Yeah. No, well, that's, that's not like dark light. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What is in there, Easton? Coins. These coins. Three coins. Brooklyn, what do the coins <laughs> represent? Um, Judas accepted three silver coins for betraying Jesus into the hands of the Jewish leaders. So Judas was one of Jesus' disciples, and he did something really, really, really bad. He betrayed Jesus. He, he instead of he trying lit. to hide Jesus from um, the people, he thought, you know what, I can turn Jesus in and I can get money for turning him in. He wasn't a really good friend. I don't think. I mean, would that be a really good friend? Like, say no. you have this friend for so long, 
and you, you think you're all good with them and then all of a sudden um, you did something that it was like a secret you didn't want anyone to know but your friend was like "Ooh, if I like tell everybody about Brooklyn's secret like maybe I can get something out of it oh yeah I could betray Brooklyn that's me to better myself to get something for me no that's not a good friend so, let's see what the booklet says about it. The Jewish leaders wanted to get rid of Jesus. He was not the kind of Messiah or Son of God they wanted. They were looking for a God to send a warrior king, one riding a horse, not a donkey, who would conquer the Roman Empire that ruled over the Jews. But that was not God's plan. Instead of conquering warring king, Jesus came as a man, peaceful, humble, and full of God's love. He came to earth to show us this love and to teach us that true life and goodness only come from our Father in heaven. We experience the best of God's goodness for us when God comes into our lives. It changes our hearts and gives us the ability to follow Jesus. We can't do anything without God, anything good. The Pharisees, however, were not good. They paraded around showing how good they thought they were, but their hearts were evil, sinful. They were judgmental, selfish, and prideful. Jesus wanted the people to know that this was wrong. He taught that it's not what we're like on the outside that's important. It's what is in our hearts that really matters. Judas was one of Jesus' disciples who at first followed Jesus, but decided later to be disobedient to God. He chose to throw away his love for Jesus by betraying him to his enemies, and Judas betrayed Jesus for only 30 silver coins. When someone betrays Jesus, it is a sin. So, I, Judas, why? Why did you betray Jesus? And then you, go, you know what? I can ask that question, but you know what? I can I, ask mama, myself the mommy, question. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Why do I mommy, sin? Mommy. I can think of a lot of things that I've done this week that God would not be very happy with. What about you, Brooklyn? Do you think we're yeah. kind of like Judas in a way? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I betrayed Jesus. Yeah, everybody sins. I don't know if I betrayed Jesus if I was uh, back in that day, but I definitely have done a lot of things like Judas that God's not happy with me either. So, light purple, Brooklyn. Oh! Ooh, the Passover cup. At Jesus' oh. Last Supper, with his disciples before he died on the cross, he used the cup of wine to explain his death. Some Christians too. still drink from a cup to remember Christ's blood poured out for us and our sins. So that cup represents supper. the Last Supper. <laughs> it was like a cup that, I mean, I think that's what it was like. Cook. Back in the day, it represents Jesus' Last Supper. Did you know that hundreds of years before Jesus came, Egypt made God's people into slaves? No. It's true. God sent Moses to tell Pharaoh to free the Jews, but Pharaoh disobeyed God and refused to let them go. Part of God's punishment for Pharaoh and his people was to send a destroyer to kill all the firstborn children in Egypt. But God told his people, the Jews, to put the blood of the lamb on their doors as a sign of their faith. He told the destroyer to pass over their houses and not kill their children. Since then, as a way of remembering God's great love and protection, Jews celebrate the Passover every year. Ooh. Have you ever heard that we too are slaves and need to be freed just like the Jews in Egypt? We need to be let go from our slavery to sin. So God sent Jesus as the perfect lamb, the lamb of God, to save us because God and his son are perfect. The perfect blood from Jesus' death on the cross forever protects his followers from being destroyed. Any one of us who truly love and trust in Jesus will be saved. From our sins and eternal death. We will be passed over. Isn't this great news? Yeah. Yes. Oh. I want eternal life. When I die, 
I don't really want to die. This flesh will die. This flesh will die. But Brooklyn, what's going to live on? Our souls. souls. Our souls going to live on. We get a new body in heaven and live eternal life with Jesus Christ. That is something. I mean, that is the best part of Easter right there. That we will never die. The ones who truly love Jesus and are living for him. <laughs> We're truly, I love that. Now, when Jesus came and died for sinners to provide this salvation and protection by his blood, the meaning of the Passover was changed. Jesus helped his disciples understand the new meaning of the Passover meal when they ate together the night he was arrested. Jesus told his disciples that the bread would be to remember his body, which would be the sacrifice on the cross the next day. Then he took the cup of wine and used it as a sign of remembrance of his blood, saying, this is my blood. Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Okay, next. My turn. Orange, Easton. Orange. What's in the orange egg, Easton? Uh, Butterfingers. <laughs> what? Butterfingers. Butterfingers? <laughs> Not butterfingers. <laughs> Praying hands. Praying hands remind us that Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane to pray with his disciples. Okay, Jesus gives us a wonderful example of the importance of Butter prayer. Fingers. He often went off by himself mm -hmm. to pray to God the Father. I can't believe like Jesus was Jesus. He should have had like so much faith, but he still needed to pray and he still went um, and prayed. So that, I mean, that's like if Jesus prayed, we should be praying too. I mean, he was God's son and he still even prayed. So don't you think that we should be praying too a lot more than we do? He often went off by himself to pray to God the Father. During this difficult time in his life before he was captured, Jesus asked the disciples to come with him. He wanted them to pray and to keep him company. Jesus was troubled. He knew he was going to die. Since he never sins, he had never experienced any of the results of his own sin. He would have to experience God forsaking him because he must reject sin. But Jesus was willing to die on the cross because he knew this was his father's plan to save the people who put their trust in him. Do you think it would be hard to die and have God turn away from you? Would you pray? Yeah, Jesus maybe. was God, but even he believed prayer to his father was needed. Ooh. So Jesus went to the garden of Gethsemane with his disciples to pray, but oh, they I fell asleep. Wait. Not once, but three times. Oh, these friends of Jesus, these mortal people. Jesus wanted them to stand guard and look out while he goes and quietly prays and closes his eyes and talks to his father. And the disciples were supposed to be sitting there, you know, awake and, you know, keeping him company for one, but then guarding so he wouldn't get captured because he was like still afraid. And what did they do? They fell asleep. Praying hands means something super significant. It means that prayer is super, super important. And Jesus totally gave us a good example because he prayed to Jesus, his father. And if he prayed to Jesus, his father, and he wasn't a sinner, we should be praying. Brother Will. Because we are big sinners. Next one. Okay, next one, next one is green. green. Brooklyn, what's in green? Oh, a leather whip. A leather whip? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that I'm gonna beat you. Very fun. What does the leather whip represent? After his trial by Pilate, the Roman soldiers used leather ropes with rocks and metal woven <laughs> with Jesus, leaving 39 deep gashes in his skin. Oh my goodness. That's at more than any time, these dark and evil days were scary and sad for the followers of Jesus. The Jewish leaders had brought Jesus before the Roman governor in Judea, Pontius Pilate, to defend himself for claiming to be God. Because Jesus claimed to be God, they said he was an enemy of the Roman Empire 
end of Caesar, its king. They wanted him sentenced to death. Can you believe Pilate put Jesus to death? But before he did, he told his soldiers to scourge up a whip and whip him. At any time, Jesus, the Son of God, could <laughs> oh have stopped God, this. Shit. The trial, the whipping, and oh even gosh. God's... Wait. The tr trial, the whipping, and even Jesus' death. But it wasn't stopped. That's because a God damage. has a plan. That's a lot of damage. But he wanted to do the will of his Father. And so he did nothing and, and said nothing to defend himself. Wow, that's In a lot the Bible, of a long time ago, it was foretold that Jesus would be whipped and beaten. I gave my back to those who strike me and my cheeks to those who pluck out the beard. I do not cover my face from humiliation and spitting. Also, Isaiah says in the Bible, he was pierced through our transgressions, breaking God's laws. He was crushed for our iniquities, our sins. The chastening, the punishment for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging, he, we are healed. God allowed his son to be whipped or scourged in our place for our sins. Jesus didn't deserve to die because he had never sinned, but we have sinned. Jesus died in our place for our sin, even though it was we who deserved this punishment. My goodness. What I think of the whip is, what comes to mind for me is, they sat there and whipped him and whipped him and spit on his face. I mean, he yeah, probably that's... was in brutal pain. I will probably yeah, no, know. He was in brutal pain. And oh, so he literally on... took it like a man. Now, he is there. Jesus. Like the, um... I don't think any of us can literally withstand that. Like, I've been through childbirth, and that's pretty painful. Mm -hmm. And I, I got through it. But I don't think I could be I could stand there and just be whipped over and over without reacting, without calling them names, without, without getting like, angry, screaming. without Why? yeah, without, without doing screaming, this. without being just <laughs> falling to my knees and giving up. No, Jesus but, gives us the example. Even though we probably aren't going to go through something like that, but He definitely gives us the example that, like, when you want to get angry at some someone and react back to someone because they're being mean to you, don't do it. Yeah. Do what Jesus did and just put out the fire. Pray for that person who's being mean to you. I mean, this is super, super hard. It's not an easy thing to do, okay. but we have to do it. The next one is light yellow. Okay. Uh, Ethan's ready to move on. Light yellow. Let's see. Light yellow. Ooh. Oh, that whole What is in there? A, th a crown. That what does the crown of thorns mean? They, they stuck in the. He, they sold, stuck in his head. The, yes, you're right. The soldiers, me. the soldiers who um, crucified crucified Jesus placed a crown of thr thorns thorns on his head, so they could mock, mock him, him by saying, "Hey, hail, hail king, king of the Jews, king of the Jews." So the crown of thorns represents something. That's so mean. It's mean. They, they, imagine since Jesus was claiming going to be your God, skull. yeah, the, they, wow. they said, okay, if you are a king, let's make you a crown. But the crown was made of thorns and they literally stuck it down into his skull right and then up. danced around and said, hail king of the Jews and made fun of him. How? That's, that's super mean. Uh, yeah. Can you believe that some of the same people who are praising Jesus as God, a few days before, when he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, were now treating him like a wicked person? Yes. They decided if Jesus really was God, he would save himself from having to die. So since Jesus wasn't doing anything about all this crazy stuff that was going on to him, people were literally like, that's not God. But he only did it for us. I mean, he could, be, he could stop this madness, and he just takes it. I look at it more like it is God because he was a man. I mean, that's a man who can take that. Don't you think, Brooklyn? Yeah. God's amazing plan was to save sinners by allowing his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for them. 
Yet people chose not to believe Jesus and reject him. Ooh. We should never believe others when they tell us Jesus is not God. And we should never be mean or treat someone badly just because others do. We should always do what the Bible, God's word tells us to do. And the Bible tells us we should always love others because and this is right and it is the way we show that we love God. The Roman guards did not love God. They rejected Jesus as God. They teased, taunted him, and beat him. They made a crown out of sh sharp thorns, put it on his head, kneeled before him, teased him by saying, Hail, King of the Jews, even though they didn't believe he was a king. And then they spit on him and took a strong, hollow stick called a reed to beat Jesus on the head. They crushed the crown of thorns into his head and caused him to bleed badly and still Jesus showed them the love of God by forgiving and praying for them while they were doing all this to him what the Bible says if you love God you will love others no matter what you will love others so if you don't love others you show that you really don't, if you love, don't God. love others then you're stupid. remember too when you experience the thorns of others hatred towards you that Jesus responded in love even when he was hated and treated terribly. And I think that is a huge lesson for what is going on in this world right now. We all need to get along. You know what's really going on in this world? No, it's not just the coronavirus. It's the hate. It's the racist. It's all the crazy stuff. All the dumb, stupid fighting people. It's because, no, we're not living for Jesus correctly. We're living for our own flesh. We want to get our own agenda yeah, out there. Dirtbag. Let's get Jesus out there. I mean, yes! Woo! Okay, Woo! it's not just they're the dirt bags. We're the dirt bags. We're all dirt bags, okay? <laughs> we all need Jesus. <laughs> We're, all dirt bags. We're all dirt bags. <laughs> Let's get the love of Jesus out there. And then we will know how to live and 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 live peaceful. But honestly, I don't think that's going to happen. Because because our world sucks. Well, we don't want to say that. We want to have a good, optimistic mind about it. Not but help. in reality, Satan is kind of ruling this earth. Mm -hmm. And that's why God's coming back. Uh, to get us out of here and move us to heaven where we can live eternal life. Yeah! Right, next one! Yellow! Mm -mm. No, it's okay. yellow. Yellow! What's in yellow? Ooh! 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 A nail! nail. They the stuck nail. it in your wrist! The what does the nail represent, Brooklyn? Three large nails were dr driven into Jesus Jesus's hands and feet to nail him to the to the cross. Oh, oh my baby. goodness. Ow. So after all the teasing and all the bloody mess they put him through in the beginning, they literally did that Imagine too. the nail going like right it, through your yeah. veins and your wrist. It, it, oh. I, it was right here. Like Ouch. through his hand. It and and right they nailed it right through onto a wooden cross. Right through. Ouch. That just hurt. It went like yeah. right through his veins Why too. did Jesus have to die? In the beginning, God created Adam and Eve and gave them the freedom to choose. Sadly, when given the choice to obey God, they chose to disobey him stupid instead. Stupid idiots. If they're stupid idiots, we're all stupid idiots. That's the result idiot. was that Adam and Eve were separated from God. And as an offspring, we were born sinful and separated from God. Also, we also willfully disobey or rebel against God every day, which makes it clear we are all sinners on our own. There are many different ways we disobey God. We disobey him when we are selfish with toys or other things. We disobey him when we hit our brother or sister or lie or cheat or steal. We disobey him if we're told to do something by our parents and don't. We want to be the God or ruler of our own lives. Yeah. Now God does not sin. He is perfect and holy. He hates sin. So maybe you understand why our sin keeps us from God. Our sin is like a big cannon between us and God that we can never cross on our own. No matter how hard we try, we can't reach God because God is holy. Our sin separates us from him. Okay, we had to take a quick break. We had babies that were needing our attention. Imagine this stolen. The, Here's just, Luke. Oh, he's okay. Imagine, imagine this is a whip and this happening to you. <laughs> oh my God. 
that's a boy's rendition for you. All right, let's get back to what the nail represented. No matter how hard we try, we can't reach God because God is holy. Our sin separates us from Him. It wouldn't be right for God to let sin go unpunished. And so He punishes all sin with death. There is only one way we can be free from the punishment of death. We deserve. Do you want to know? Here it is. God the Father provided only one way to escape the punishment of sin by sending His Holy Son, Jesus, to die. Jesus received the death sinners like us deserve. Because Jesus is perfect, Son of God. Only He could be punished in the place of sinners like us. By His death on the cross, Jesus built a bridge for believers across the canyon of sin and separation. Nice! Okay. That is awesome. Okay, you? we are on light green. What's in light it's green? green. Oh, it's okay, Nolan. It's okay, Nolan. Okay. The no. dice is in light green. What does the dice represent? This oh, it's one. okay. Hmm? Look, the dice represents the Roman soldiers used dice to gamble oh, for Jesus. Can you put it robe. back in there? The Roman soldiers used dice to gamble for Jesus' robe. Dude, these people are like relentlessly mean. Are you stupid or something? Did you know that Jesus hardly owned anything in this world? So when the soldiers gambled for Jesus' clothes at the cross, it was sad that they were so selfish and cared so little for him. Psalm 2218 foretells hundreds of years before this event how the Roman soldiers would gamble for Jesus' clothes. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Jesus shows us what we are to do when others wrong us. He actually asked for forgiveness from his father for the soldiers who were about to crucify him. Luke 23, 34 tells us what he prayed. Isn't this a great example of how we should treat those who are mean to us or hate us? We know from God's word, the Bible, that we need to pray for our enemies. We are also told that we need to forgive them, just as Jesus showed us. Brooklyn, what do you think of Jesus' prayer? I thought it was good. It was really good. Really, really good. Okay, we are moving on to purple. What is in the purple A? Let's open it up, Nolan. Oh, here, you can open that one up. We'll let you open that one next. What's in the purple A? It says... A spear. A spear! That's the word for it. Okay. Roman soldiers used a spear to pierce Jesus' side yes. when he was on the cross. What? Imagine this! It never ends! Imagine what? It. Because the soldiers had to be absolutely sure Jesus was dead, they pierced him in his side with a spear. When they did, out came water and blood. This was proof they needed to show that Jesus had died, and it's proof to us as well. The water and blood mixture that poured out from the spear wound in Jesus' side makes it absolutely clear that Jesus did really die. Jesus must have loved us so much to die in our place for our sins. Easton, the next one is cream. What is in the cream egg? Cream. 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 <gasps> oh, what's that? The white cloth. The white cloth. Joseph of Arimathea wrapped the body of Jesus in a linen cloth after he died on the cross. Joseph was a very rich man and wanted his Lord Jesus to be buried in a proper manner. Did you know the Bible said what Joseph would do before Joseph or Jesus was born? Listen to Isaiah 53, 9. His grave was assigned with wicked men, yet he was with a rich man in his death. So Joseph went to Pilate and got the body of Jesus to bury him in a nice tomb that he owned. After bringing the body to this tomb, Joseph wrapped Jesus in a linen cloth. Joseph, the rich man, took that cloth and he didn't care. He went up to Pilate 
and showed how much he loved Jesus and didn't worry that Pilate might kill him too for loving Jesus so much that he wanted to give Jesus a proper burial. That was that's a good man. Good man. Good man. Okay, good we are moving on to pink. What's in pink, Brooklyn? What is in the pink? What's in pink, Nolan? What is a rock? A rock. Brooklyn, what did the rock... Okay. Actually, you know what it represents. Without even reading, what does the rock represent? That is the what? one. Wait, here, sit down just in case you're not in it. Okay. Well, he was in the tomb. The What was blocking it was the rock and the two so soldiers rock. were out there. Um, wait, uh, just out there. And that's really good, the rock. Is. Yes. It says wait, the huge stone... That had covered the tomb was yeah. rolled, no, was found, stone. rolled it's away. A, rock. a large stone. Well, here's the real story. Here it goes. A large stone, bigger than a door and heavy as a car, was placed over the opening of the tomb to prevent any grave robbers. There was like people who would come steal dead bodies. It was disgusting. What are you gonna do? Eat them? Weird. <laughs> <laughs> from stealing the body of a dead person or valuables in the tomb that had belonged to the dead. In the case of Jesus, the Pharisees were worried Jesus' disciples or other followers would take the body and then say Jesus had risen from the dead. Whoa. Like it was prophesied. Pilate even had the soldiers close the tomb with the official Roman seal or stamp on the edge of this huge stone. Pilate and the soldiers were sure this would keep the disciples from stealing Jesus' body. Because the penalty for breaking the seal was death. The Roman soldiers also knew the penalty for them was death if anyone broke the seal during their watch over the tomb. Wow! When Mary of Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb of Jesus, Jesus' mother, the other Mary, to anoint his body with spices and saw the stone moved away from the tomb, they were shocked. And all the women found in Jesus' tomb was Jesus' empty grave clothes. They were, they were fearful and didn't know what to do. They didn't remember Jesus had told them he would rise from the dead. How could you not remember that? What? Are you stupid? So, Brooklyn, how is the stone encouraging? Like, how it encourages us to remember that we need to have faith. Because even his mother forgot. Even Jesus' mother forgot. I mean, she was the one chosen to have this baby. And so she went on with it. She had the baby. And she still forgot. How? How? Wow. That, that he was wow. the, the plan of him, he, she even forgot. What I mean, the he? She's immortal, though. And Mary Magdalene knew that he was a special man. And there was a special thing to happen. But even she forgot. So... The stone represents like when it actually rolled away, it faith. We are to have faith in Jesus, even when we can't see or forget. Go back to Jesus. Every time. Go back to Jesus. The last one. Even when you're confused, scared, don't know what's going on, go back to Jesus because it's all about faith. And and, and there's a peace that passes all understanding that you won't know until you actually go back to Jesus. Wait, well, so whatever's going on in your life, oh. whatever you're scared about, whatever you're having anxiety about, fearful about, go to Jesus. So, go to Jesus. Last egg, guys. What's in the oh, last blue. egg? So it's blue. light blue. blue. What's in it? Nothing. Nothing. You it's empty. What, what is the cause? Why? Jesus rose from... What? The no. There was nothing in the Jesus? tomb. Yeah. Because he rose from the dead. Jesus is there is the nothing tomb. in the tomb. Jesus That's what is this represents, Look. folks. Jesus rose. Say? Jesus is tomb is empty because he rose from the dead. Don't, don't put This was a very special time at the tomb. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary saw an angel who told them not to be afraid. He said that no one had taken Jesus' body, but... But instead, he had risen from the dead. The angel told them to go tell the disciples what they had seen, that Jesus was risen. Can you imagine how excited they were? Yay. They ran all the way home to tell the disciples the good news. He is risen from the Whoa. dead. Woo. And that is the story. Yeah. Yay, Jesus is risen. Woo. That is the Easter story. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. 
our crazy way of telling it. And make sure you subscribe if you want to hear more about Jesus. And like yes. the video. And like Definitely. the video. We had so much fun. Be looking for more fun videos around the holiday for this. Actually, Easter is a pretty Maybe favorite we'll do in the one Trumbo for Christmas. Yeah, we'll do some for Christmas. For sure. For his birthday? For his birthday, yeah. When he was born? So, when he was born, yes. That would be when he was born. That's the story of that. So, thank you guys again for watching. We'll catch you later. Bye. Bye. Peace, Peace out. Peace.